just use the time to unwind a little bit. Um, I was listening to Peter Mons, one of Peter Mons' uh, blogs, where he was talking about his high school reunions. And it just kind of got me thinking, you know, I have never wanted to go to a high school reunion ever. When I first went into high school, when I was a freshman, I was all gung-ho, yay, you know, high school, rah, rah, you know, Mount Eden Monarchs, blue and gold, rah, I was way into school and school spirit and all that. I did all the spirit day and monarch day and all the stuff we did. I was, you know, I participated 100% in all of that. Was not a cheerleader, no. I was too fat to be a cheerleader. Um, but as, by the time I got to be a senior, I was so far removed from school that I probably should have just dropped out. It probably would have been better off all the way around um, because I didn't graduate. I did not get to walk in graduation. I, it was just bad. Uh, it was out of school, you know, I cut classes more than I attended classes by my senior year. Uh, I had, quite honestly, I had a crappy counselor who did no guidance whatsoever. Um, you know, if you weren't in his core group of students, you just weren't worth his time, basically. And, Needless to say, I wasn't in his core group of students. Um, you know, I was also dealing with typical teenage issues. I was dealing with what I now know are body image issues. I didn't know they were body image issues at the time uh, because in the 70s, we didn't have body image issues. You know, <laughs> I mean, they weren't considered, that's not what they were called, you know. Um, I was the fat girl, I was, or one of the fat girls, I was, but that's, you know, I got teased for my weight. Um, in fact, I, I started thinking about, there was this guy who sat behind me in algebra class in freshman year, and I would always hear him talking to his friends that sat around him, you know, about me, my weight. Um, I always wore jeans and t-shirts because I just didn't feel comfortable in dresses or anything else. And in the 70s, early 70s, this would have been like 75, you, girls, Maybe not regular size girls, but chubby girls, fat girls. If you wanted to buy a pair of jeans, you had to go to the boys department. Um, I wore boys Levi's and corduroys. I had to go to the boys department at Liberty House, which was a department store we had. Um, they were actually a Hawaiian department store and they expanded into Hayward where I grew up and That's where I found the Levi's and the corduroys that would fit me and because you could buy by waist size and by length and I felt more comfortable in those. I did not like wearing dresses um, Quite honestly my ch my thighs chafed <laughs> Um, which anyone who's overweight knows that problem. So, uh, yeah, I, I used to sit and I'd hear him. And I don't know if he didn't realize I could hear him, but I was just so embarrassed and so humiliated. I never turned around and said anything. I just, I'm sure my face was just red as a beet because I was so embarrassed. I just put my head down and let my hair fall and I take it in and um, this guy
guy actually sent me a friend request on Facebook, you know, years later, obviously. Um, but I was kind of like, why on earth would he send me a friend request? This is so weird. And does he not remember high school? Does he not know who he's requesting friendship with? Um, but I thought, okay, I'll be, you know, maybe he's changed, maybe blah, 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 you know. So I thought I'll be the big person and, big person, uh, you know, I'll be the big person and I will accept the friend request. And I did. And it's not like we chat or anything, but I see his posts and, you know, he's just like the family man posting about, things he does, things his kids does, stuff like that. Um, typical family posting stuff. Um, so maybe he has, you know, I'm, I'm sure he has changed since high school. I mean, from my perspective, most kids in high school were jerks. I, I know I was a jerk. Um, and I apologize profusely to anyone and everyone that I was a jerk to. Not that anyone will see this, but you know, it's out there. <laughs> um, there are some things I felt really bad about over the years, which I won't go into because this isn't the place, but um, but yeah, I, you know, because of things like that, my my body issues and I was never popular I was never I, I, I wasn't even semi popular I would be surprised if most of the people at my high school knew who I was and so I really just never had a desire to go back and schmooze with any of these people um, you know and, and just doesn't seem to be a reason for me it's you know and there's nothing that I need to rub into anybody's face like I would want to but you know it's I, I don't know there's just nothing there for me High school is just such a weird thing and there are so so many things about high school I wish I could change um, I, if I had a do-over knowing what I know now oh my god uh, the things that I would change geez I would be a totally different person in high school I can tell you that um, we did what we did and we deal with the consequences of our actions well even as adults we deal with the consequences of our actions but as kids I suppose that's our learning tools our learning mechanisms and I don't know it just kind of makes you think when you think back on who you were in high school as opposed to who you are today I mean, how many of us are really the same person? You know, I, I doubt that there's anyone who really is. Um, there are, there's one, one guy I know of who, when we were little kids, he was like a bully. I mean, he, he'd push and, and hit and, you know, I was, I was afraid of him, um, and he has turned out to be the sweetest guy. Uh, you know, once he got older, he just became a, a lovely person. Um, I, you know, I haven't actually seen him in person, but we've emailed a few times and um, Facebook and stuff like that, and he's just like one of the sweetest people in the world. <laughs> it's amazing the turnaround. And then 
that there is one girl who is always the shy, quiet one. If you could get five words in a row out of her, it would be surprising. And now she's the one telling risque jokes online and, well, maybe not risque, but um, kind of out there kind of jokes. Um, and it's just, the flip is just kind of stunning. And I bet if you would go back to who you were in high school, and look at who you are now. You are probably nothing like that person. And in fact, I just read a book. I was trying to read all Christmas books during the month of December, and which I pretty did, did pretty well on. And this book caught my eye. Why did it catch my eye? Oh, because the author is from where I used to live in Oregon. And she actually, she placed the book there. It was about a woman who ran, or who runs a reindeer ranch, which there was a reindeer, or I, su I suppose the reindeer ranch is still there. It was a long time institution. Um, and it was actually, I know the reindeer ranch. I used to pass by it every day going home. And so it was kind of a neat thing, you know, knowing these alarm went off. Um, and so she was kind of embarrassed because she had been the overweight girl and um, and I need to change it. Which way am I going? I'll go this way. Um, and so she was just kind of embarrassed and you know because she had been the overweight girl and he never knew she existed and you know of course he was a big man on campus and then he went to serve in Iraq and became a hero in the war and he was considered the hometown hero and you know everybody knew who he was and blah 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 so it was just kind of the juxtaposition and that's kind of you know, I, I could feel her. I, I got that. So, then I read a lot of other books too. I, I really only found one good suspenseful Christmas book. Um, it was called The Santa Claus Killer, I think. And, oh, that was a good one. Um, and, just got it like the day before yesterday 
and it's the next one in her Rebecca Frank series and I've been waiting for it to become free on Amazon and it finally did and it's um, something like he sees you when you're, no it's not he sees you when you're sleeping, but something, it, it has to do with Santa Claus. I, I read, there's a short story that goes, that fits in like right before that. And I did read that. And so it, um, it's about a, a killer Santa Claus thing. And so it fits right in with the Christmas theme. And so that is up next. I start that tonight. And the problem is I can only read for about 10 or 15 minutes each night and then I'm out. Uh, it, you know, it's, that's the end of my day and that drags me down. That's how I unwind as I pick up a book and I read and then I'm down. And if I try to read during the day, I fall asleep. <laughs> And it's funny because I used to read nonstop. I could sit and read all day long. And now it's just, I'm out. I, it's like that's become my relaxing thing. And so that's how I fall asleep. And so, okay, I'm almost here. My exit is coming up. So I am trying out different phone holders for my car. This one is um, one that goes in the air conditioning slot. So I am going to try out a different one next time and we'll see how the wobble compares because I know there's a lot of vibration on these. And I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.